Let's call it kings with straw mats. The Kumbh Mela, a meeting of holy men in India. The first time I ever went to a Kumbh Mela, I was living in Kathmandu, writing poetry and experimenting with astral projection. When I heard that the Kumbh Mela was about to take place in Allahabad, I checked my dervish manual, the poems of Rumi, and it told me to make my way as quickly as possible to the special 12-year meeting of pilgrims and holy men at the confluence of three rivers, the Ganges, the Jumna, and the invisible underground Saraswati. Over 12 million people were headed by jet, train, ox cart, or simply on foot, with the object of bathing at the astrologically perfect moment at the point where the three rivers met. As soon as I read those words of Rumi which proclaimed, stop being a water bearer and immerse yourself in the ocean, I got some color film on credit, no easy task in Nepal, and made travel arrangements for Allahabad, where I arrived with about $20, dreaming of 12 million third eyes opening simultaneously. After all, the place where the three rivers met was considered to be the external representation of the third eye itself. The Kumbha Mela takes its name from the Hindu legend which tells how four drops of the gods, holy elixir, fell to the earth from a kum or pitcher during a struggle with jealous demons. The places where those four drops fell are Allahabad, Hardwar, Ujjain, and Nasik, where the famous festivals are held every 12 years. And what was that elixir, if not that most powerful psychedelic, the fabled Soma, which was known by the ancients to confer instant divinity? On my arrival, after literally having to smoke my way through hundreds of naked sadhus covered in ashes, I was fortunate enough to meet Ganesh Baba, India's own Mr. Natural, who immediately transmitted to me by psychedelic bullet all I needed to know and gave me a place to sleep besides. It was Ganesh who said someone should write a book called Kings with Straw Mats. It would be impossible to estimate how many tons of ganja and charas were smoked during the month-long festival. The Samadhi Wala, who was about to have himself buried alive for a period of five days without food or water, sings out to me, only the Almighty can look after a yogi. Apart from all the drugs used to induce ecstasy and vision, some of the highest yogis and fakirs had their own time-honored ascetic techniques for getting even higher through meditation and the practice of austerities. In search of mystic union with reality and the acquisition of special powers, they defied all ideas of human endurance, like the Karishwaris or standing lords, standing on one leg for 12 years or more, even sleeping while standing with the aid of a hanging swing. Others known as Ekbahus, or one arms, hold their arms up for similar periods of time until the arm shrivels into a permanent upright position and the fingernails grow right into the flesh. Other Nagas could lift enormous weights with their cocks and during one of the processions through the streets of the city I saw a naked sadhu pulling a carload of saffron swamis by a rope tied to his penis. On that day, the townspeople threw over 50,000 rupees worth of marigolds at the feet of the naked holy men as they marched to the river.
Even in your wildest dreams, you could never imagine such a circus of high madness, true devotion, and showbiz savvy as the Kumbh Mela, which could have absorbed the whole Woodstock nation as if under a single tent. As I stood immersed in the water, with tears of inexpressible emotion running out of my eyes, and thought, here I stand alone among millions, I began to laugh. Like pure spirits under the earth, their bodies like a bride with earth on them for a coverlet, Rumi. You say life is not a trinket, and these spirits under the earth, wearing only ashes, pass from camp to camp, hips and eyes askew. They have no problem deciding what to do. The fire must be kept going, the fuel unwasted to burn this inner eye, without which we cannot smoke propless. Their origin is grace and their return is grace. Even from the garden to the garden they are coming. Even now they are coming, every moment they are coming. The Babas and Sadhus from mountain and river. They make the mudra, thumb rubbing palm, the gesture of smoking with hair piled high. Their stilts are invisible. This is the Kum, the Mela of Aquarius the twelve years meeting, and twelve times twelve still they are coming, the members of the Sangam, freaks and straits, the people of dust. All of us are coming, and going we come, waiting for your presence. It has always been here, and there it will be, as we throw ourselves headlong. We are a multitude moving towards a head.
ਹੋਏ ਤਾਂ ਖਾਓ ਤੁਰ ਕਰ ਫੇਰ ਖਿੰਚੇਗੇ ਜੀ ਆਈ ਨੋ ਆਲ ਇਸ ਸਕਾਈ ਐਂਡ ਆਈ ਨੋ ਆਲ ਵੇਅਰ ਵੇਅਰ ਦੀ ਮੈਨ ਇਸ ਗੋਨ ਟੂ ਹੈਲ ਯੈਸ ਦੇ ਡਿਡ ਨਾਟ ਨੋ ਵੇਅਰ ਦੀ ਗੋਡ ਦੇ ਡਿਡ ਨਾਟ ਨੋ ਵੇਅਰ ਦੀ ਗੋਡ ਇਸ ਰੈਪਟੀਸ਼ਨ ਆਫ ਦੀ ਲਾਈਟ ਆਫ ਦੀ ਸਾਈਟ ਆਫ ਗੋਡ ਕਿਸ਼ੋਰੀ ਜੈ ਮਹੇਸ਼ ਜਿਤ ਜੰਦੇ ਜਕਨਾ If you ever want to go to a Kumbh Mela yourself, just take the Kailash 42nd Street Express. Don't forget to change at Allahabad and be sure to bring those two extra arms to hold yourself with. Om Namo Narayan. Entrance to paradise. Enter. The one-legged sadhu chases the maya hustler away after giving him the fire of intention. We are all wood for your fire. Juna, from the beginningless time. Am is Aum, Aham Brahasmi, I am Brahma. The night is full of sky speech. Turbaned reflections under green fluorescence glow in spheres of violet effusion. the meaning of must as elephant intoxication must mean that the true temple has no stones though we say stoned in the stream of the sangam we are moved while moving in the purity of mud as we go from tent to tent in the naga camps sadhu means cool they tell me and this is the great mela of india if you want to know why i wear black eat from the silver vial as the sadhu with the crystal beads winds the glittering net around 3 feet of matted hair and the sky speech fills the cone of this night avdut says o maharaj let me prostrate myself on the burning log of your fire the entrance to paradise is a revolving door
Ardwar is a pilgrimage city which can support a population fluctuation of millions. One of the seven holy cities of India, it is also one of the four sacred places where the Kumbh Mela, or 12-year meetings of holy men, are held. For the Vaishnavites, it is Hari Dwara, the gate of Hari or Vishnu. For the Shaivites, it is Hardwara, the gate of Shiva. For most, it is the gate of heaven or God's city. No static city but a door through which multitudes can flow. There is no better place than Hardwar to experience the simple clarity of the Ganges and the religious purity it engenders. A vegetarian city of saffron swamis where everyone knows that life is a game of karma, where no animal is killed and even the eating of eggs is forbidden. See the steamrollers prepare for a new invasion as millions arrive to take the sacred bath. Across the river is a thick jungle which extends all the way to the border of Nepal. And sometimes you can hear the elephants roaring in the night. You look at the Ganga flowing at great speed like cold coffee swirling with milk. And hear the Baba say, money is like water. When it is flowing, it is good. When it stays in one place, it gets dirty. Dwarf lady with marigolds around her neck nods agreement as she passes by in a rickshaw. Endless movie music blares out of loudspeakers while in the not too distant shadows sit the deformed and untouchable beggars like a wall before the river. Somewhere an unexpected telegram is put into your hands. It reads, Sky invaders claim asylum. If you want to escape the cycle of death and rebirth, come to Hardwar right away. The door opens two ways. Today the horses ate marigolds, sweeping it all away as it falls, the Adivasi black magic, aboriginal dream residing in the power of stones. Everyone after the forbidden shot, Maya shears her hair, proclaims herself Carmen. She is sad and happy by turns. A Ram Baba appears seeking a turban and sings in Malik's stall a song of funhouse mirrors where shopkeepers refused to let him touch their feet. It was then that he touched the feet of the broom and called it Lakshmi. Because I wore black, you appeared in my shadow. Charas is luxury life, luxury of God. You have to walk the line between love and fascination, lost in the magic of a kiss. No shortcut to false samadhi, but the long dusty road leading nowhere. Let's go. 
And the parade never ends, nor the waiting. Four standing lords under the trees give darshan to the people, and always they are asking you to give, to give your life away. The crowd presses in. Pens have been built for the pilgrims. The procession begins when the sun completes its transit. Then the Nagas will enter the river. A harmonium picks up the beat. The lotus only opens when touched by the sun. There is a dune shining body in space with a long plume, incandescence. But you have to know where to look. They are in the southwestern sky behind the Mansa Devi temple. Some will see it with the naked eye, especially from the summit of the Himalayas. And from that highest point, only from there will you see the sky. It is Ma from which Maya comes, so why be afraid? Yet on the day of gold, who can join the thronging multitudes to the place of purification? Chillum nee, charas, you have chillum. Huh? Charas, charas. Charas. Sorry, sorry. Huh? Huh? Ah, oh, you have charas, okay, good. This is your solid. Please come back to my dream. Cigarette? In my bag there? He has one here. Yes. Okay. Photo lene ka Allah bhakti pas kela. Aapko nahi aata? Nahi mere. Niche rakho niche niche aa baitho niche. Dabake rakhna. Merlin Baba takes a matchstick between thumb and forefinger as if it were the measure of a journey yet to be made. Logging along on thin shapely legs, doe-eyed and van dyked, Kuku Baba strolls along the banks of the Ganga in a clean chemise, freshly powdered with ash from the sacred fire, carrying the small jola or sadhu bag with the hidden pockets. Pieces of pink scrim with silver tassels swinging gently from the shoulder strap, calling out, Kuku! Kuku! Charas! Charas!
No, it's like a little bit. Come on, come on. Come on. चलो अपने लखनाथ आएंगे घोड़ा रहेगा हाँ नहीं बाबू फोरन रहेगा मोटा वाला रहेगा किस कब्रा घोड़ा रहेगा हाँ कब्रा नहीं है आखिर थोड़ी है अब लग नहीं है उसकी है उसमें साला एक कब्र हो गया मेला में गुरुभाई हाथी ठीक है See the blind beggars as they go to the river singing, the human spirit rising to the moment under a crown of stars in the great theater of life. I send twenty-one dollars and seven black knots to the guru who did not come and wait for night to fall. Ram is on Shiva's brow. Shiva is on Rama's brow. We just went to visit the original guy on the bed of nails. He also walks on shoes full of nails and wears 25 kilograms of iron bracelets on one arm. She would like to be a magic man without a woman, the Lord of Invisibility, Alaknath, 
you can't help listening to the sound of her voice close to Prakrit, natural language. Smoking our way through every contingency, I had my skull x-rayed at a local clinic in order to establish a visual record of my state of mind during this auspicious time. I like to see the sun in black and white, he says, the last viceroy passing on the page of shadows, the Baba's rose petal floating on a full bowl of milk. <laughs> the universal monitor is laser printed on your whirling disc. Devgiri leaves in his chauffeured ambassador with orange pennants flying. Mela finished, but yoga never finished. The list of dead is incomplete. Having mastered the 84,000 asanas, he learns to slow down his heartbeat and to stop his breath at will. Using his own body as an astral platform, he goes from illumination to union. And on to samadhi, the object of which is nothing less than complete release and ultimately God absorption. Amritanand Giri, 86-year-old master of yoga, demonstrates his prowess. Connecting the chakras, he performs an elegant finger dance, lifts himself off the ground on his hands, 
and makes his body a star mandala, the position of the unborn. Oriyan ban, garu yag mudra. He brings together sun and moon, holds his ego under his thumb. By purifying his semen, he becomes the embodiment of ritual sacrifice, making of his own body a very altar. Anything goes on the other side of the river. Neither this, neither that, but something else. That something for nothing, which walks the line too high to die. Do we have the smoke here or? Yes. <coughs> very high, very hard compassion. <coughs> One child time. <coughs> Dwarka Dhish Ki Jai. I am coming from Gujarat. Gujarat. Dakor. My name is Coconut Baba. Hari Hari Bol. Dakor Gujarat. I am coming from Gujarat. God is one. God is great. God is light. God is kind. God is here. God is everywhere. Don't forget. God is one. Hare Krishna, Hare But I mean, doesn't this have a good effect on the bronchioles, you know? If oh, yes, it has an effect on the bronchioles also and uh, an anesthetic effect on the brain also. Uh -huh. And it brings you good sleep also. And so what about potency, sexuality? Or? Oh, very nice, potential also. Uh -huh. Very good potential. The sadhus are taking a lot of this plant. Not sadhus. only sadhus, even grasses also. Yes, everyone. Oh, yeah. महाराजी गुरुदेव मुझा मत हो सा Third eye receives orange cable hookup. Just book me a room at the hotel. Relax. Here we see Kemanan Puri, another member of the Juna Akara, known to some of us as Kak Baba, doing the Linga Ke Kriya, an exercise practiced by most Nagas. This discipline involves stretching the penis, rolling it on a stick, twisting it around several times like an airplane propeller. Most Nagas are said to break a nerve in the penis as part of the initiation to render it incapable of erection. I'm going to go to the hospital. 
The Nagas usually wear long matted locks even to the ground when not piled on their heads after the hair of Shiva, who legend has it caught the overflow of the flooding Ganga in this top knot, thereby saving the human race from drowning. strategic diamond, the throne of compressed bone in the unsure dark, where only light can forgive and your mind is signed. If you keep your zipper open, you will stay cool with Baba so-and-so, three roses and a leaf, one rose for the thief. Outside the tent of the 18 mothers, a swirling cosmic sound stays constant. Not to forget the previous night's encounter with Kali on the bridge, it was fantastic. 
When I flashed her, she ran at me with her iron spear, topped with peacock feathers, and forced me to my knees before letting me pass. Don't disregard the gentle sweep of a saffron-colored turban or the elegant use of an old sweater. Since the naked Nagas, many still wear no clothing at all. Even today in modern cities, they can be seen walking naked through the streets or sitting dressed only in ashes. Most are known by their saffron or ochre-colored cloth and the rudraksh beads they wear in their hair or around their necks. No, I don't smoke movies at all. Uh, 
Bob, are you getting any style? And surely we will die without memory, coming to cold in the shadow of space. And if it isn't too late for the star to love you, spraying the sky with whispers attuned to galaxies hungry for flame. And if the tongue of night sings of albino winos till the morning light shafts the doorway, then surely we will die tonight, faceless at the white gate, sharing the smoke with ancient shapes in future garb.
How perfect to be in Hardbar at the great 12-year meeting of the saints, thinking of you, Julian, remembering how you said dreamily from your hospital bed, I would like to go to India with you. Though it seemed impossible, in some way it has come to pass, and as I look at a disembodied marigold shirt hanging on a wire, I see Julian in his favorite color. Yes, his spirit has gone to saffron worlds inhabited by real saints. Though in the West to call someone a saint might seem the height of hubris, here in India we know that a saint is just another semi-serious guy in flip-flops, someone who might have stood next to you like you, Julian Beck, someone from whom a special light shines. The face of truth remains hidden behind a circle of gold. At dusk, leaf boats full of flowers and lit by a single candle sail down the Ganges. There you go, Julian, riding the yellow, embraced by the flame, and the flame is genius. As much as light goes beyond its definition, you are still traveling. Pure soul, pure poet, pure provocateur. After all, it was you who said, don't vote for a new king. There is a pleasure in being mad, it's none but the madman. <laughs> 